branch. I mean, it's just, we have a library system, we have one, but each branch has a personality. Each community has a personality. Um, Washington Square has its own personality, and likewise, Ashtamo has its own personality. Um, and the branch has its own story. Um, and a fairly consistent story among all the branches, kind of except this one. This one has a really unique, kind of a different story. So this was a lot of fun um, putting this together. So, um, so anyway, what we'll talk about um, are kind of the origins of the branch services, kind of where that came from. Um, we'll talk about Ashtamo's first public library, which actually wasn't directly connected with KPL. Um, so we'll talk about that for a quick second. Um, and then really the roots of this library, which began in the old Herd School, which was across the street over here, um, which moved across the street to the new Herd School, which used to be right out in front of us up here, um, and then ultimately to this branch. So um, we've kind of jumped around and, and kind of um, built as we went. Um, but uh, um, it grew organically. It wasn't like the library downtown just said, you know, great, we'll rent a building or we'll build a building and we'll put a bunch of books in it and open a branch. It wasn't like that at all. It grew very organically, um, which actually is pretty cool. Um, so we start way back when um, with the idea or the concept of branch services, branch library services. Um, where today it seems like just a, a no-brainer. It's, it's like, yeah, there's a library, each community has a library. That wasn't the case. Um, and there was some resistance to it. A lot of people, I mean, we're talking the early years of the 20th century. Um, a lot of folks thought, well, we have a library. Why do we need two or three or 14? Um, Carnegie Library in New York sort of set the precedent for this and started doing these neighborhood branches. Um, and again, like, and arguably like here, um, got some pushback for it. But, you know, again, why do we need all of these? Um, but pretty soon it became evident. Um, transportation, say for instance, if you had, if you lived in Washington Square in say 1910 um, and worked in one of the factories or whatever, uh, one of the paper factories, paper mills, it wasn't necessarily an easy thing to get downtown to the main library branch um, and get your books or whatever and, and work back and forth. Um, so the idea of branch services um, came about then. Um, this is Isabella Roberts. She was the library's second lead librarian and she was the, long, the library's longest serving lead librarian. She served for 43 years. Um, from 1875, um, she was one of the first couple of employees of the library. She was, uh, um, became director, lead librarian, librarian, they're all kind of the same thing, um, in 1875, and she served until 1918, uh, but didn't quit. She kept serving, kept working in um, actually what became the local history department. So. Um, so she was a, a lifelong one, but she was really a proponent of the library, taking the library to the people. The library, there's a quote from her, belongs to all the people, and we can't be satisfied with our work so long as a large part of the community has no share in its advantages. So she was really a, a proponent of this um, sort of uh, uh, branch library system, this concept that was going on. Um, so she set up, what, during her reign, in 1910, they opened two branches, the first two branches. Um, and you'll see a common thread as we go through this, but uh, the first one was in the Portage Street School, which was just south of Washington Square then. Um, and a week later, they opened one in the East Avenue School, which was um, on top of the hill on East Main Street uh, up there. So small. Um, branches, small uh, collections, but nonetheless uh, serving the locals and they could, they transported, had rotating collections coming out of the main library and, and doing that. Um, a few years later they opened a school on West Main near the top of the West Main Hill. 
Um, they put a, uh, put a branch in there. Um, and then the folks on the north side said, well, hey, we want a branch too. Um, so they opened one on Northwest Street, which, um, and everybody know, anybody know what, uh, where the name Westnidge came from? A person. Which person? Joseph, that's right, our World War I hero. So West Street became Westnage. So fun fact. Um, but there was a school on, on North Westnage that, uh, um, and so they put a, a small library in there. So um, those were set up initially. Um, then later that year, they went ahead and added um, what they call library stations um, to five more schools on Woodward, Frank, on Lake Street, on Burdick Street, and Lovell Street, all um, in a separate room somewhere within one of the schools. So this was kind of the roots of KPL's branch systems. Um, fast forward a few years. Um, this is Flora Roberts. Um, she was the third lead main librarian. Um, no relation to Isabella, but uh, um, Flora was really kind of a mover and shaker. She really... Uh, when she, gave, she started um, her tenure at the library in 1918, um, and even with the war going on and everything else, she really took control. She rearranged the inside, made things more accessible, changed the desk around, did all kinds of stuff. Um, and in 1922, she was part of a committee that kind of spearheaded the idea of taking Kalamazoo Public Library services, which... If you back up, you notice these are all within the city, right? So um, what had been concentrated within the city, she was really a proponent of taking that beyond, and why not take those services or, or somehow find a way to make those services work in the public school, or in, in, the, yeah, in the rural schools, I should say, which were scattered all over the county. Um, so she didn't do it directly, but she was involved with the effort to try and get library services to get more books and things into these rural schools that were scattered all over the, um, the place. So, um, and her idea, you know, a quote from her, is the purpose of the library is to get the books to the people. You know, don't make them come to you. You take the service to them. So um, she was... She accomplished a lot in her tenure. Um, so <clears throat> we see in... Yeah, go ahead. Bookmobile part of that, or did that come much later? The bookmobile came a little bit later. Okay. Um, that was actually in the 1950s, but yeah, it... Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, so we see a branch pop up at, at Lincoln School on the north side. They actually closed the Northwestnage branch, or Northwest Street branch. Um, and moved it to the Lincoln School. Um, so then that was predominantly for the students. Well, the folks on the north side, the adults on the north side, said, well, hey, what about us? You know, you closed up our branch. So they opened um, a little, I guess in this day and age, we would call it a pop-up, um, but they opened a tiny branch inside Luther's Drug Store, which was over on North Street. Um, and so you could, when you, you know, shopping in the neighborhood or whatever, you could pop in and grab a library book. Um, and we're talking collections of only a couple hundred pieces, but it was a rotating collection and, and it gave access. Um, 1924, we see a, a, a branch pop up at Central High School over on Westnage. Um, on 1927, um, by then, the building at the top of the West Main Hill there, which is, is the administration building now, um, that opened, and so they opened a branch within that. Uh, that actually is the third school building um, in that area. So they, they had a, a little tiny one, and then a bigger one, and then, and then the one that you see today. So um, when that opened, um, they also opened one in 1927 on the Hillcrest School. Um, and 1927 is when the Washington Square branch opened. Um, and Washington Square, the, the branch that you can go to today, was the first standalone KPL branch. In other words, the first branch that wasn't in one of the schools. So, um, lots going on there. So, 
back to Isabel or um, back to Flora Roberts, this idea of taking the library out into the county schools. By 1930, um, they had set up a county library system, um, not part of Kalamazoo Public, but it was a separate system um, to sort of feed these branch um, libraries that they were setting up. And they, they set them up to service um, these rural schools. Um, so during the 30s, there are 15 of them scattered in, in rural schools around the county. Um, in 1940, a uh, county librarian, and, and this is um, um, uh, Irene Herringa, sorry, um, she set up um, a library in the old Ashtamo um, number 10 school, which if you're in the village of Ashtamo, it's the big brick school that's down there. Um, she set that up um, in 1940, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Sweet was in control of that one. And most importantly, it was open to the public. So it serviced the students and, and that took care of them, but uh, anybody in the township could go in and, and do it. So arguably that was Ashtamo's first public library. Um, so it opened in October 1940 uh, up on the second floor. Of course, this is the building, it's still there today. I hope they do something with it. I'd hate to see that building vanish, right? Uh, it was sponsored jointly by the school board, by the Ashtamo School Board and the PTA, the Ashtamo PTA. Um, 360 juvenile books and adult books, so not a huge collection, but um, enough to service things. And it was a, a rotating collection. Again, this was a county collection. So we're still not there with the public library, although, um, like I said, Ms. Roberts was kind of helped with the effort. Um, the building served as a school building until 1965, which I had no idea it lasted that long. But, uh, um, and presumably the library was in there. I don't know exactly the fate of the library that was there, but um, uh, after 1965, it served for ed special ed for a while. Um, but uh, again, I hope they do something with that building. Um, so a little bit more about these rural schools here. Um, and specifically in this neighborhood. Um, and so we have what's called the Old Herd School. Uh, in 1980, or 1880, Samuel Duran wrote, the first meeting of the township of Ashtamo was held in a schoolhouse, built after the fashion of shanties of that early day, with a single sloping roof and located southwest corner of section 14 on land of Augustus Buell. The date of this township meeting uh, was the first Monday of April, 1839. Now, that's the first township meeting, but the schoolhouse already existed then. And according to the description, there, this is maybe a, something that looks similar to it. So um, that's not an actual sketch of it, but um, probably it's close. Um, and judging by the description, the schoolhouse originally sat the first old herd school uh, or the first herd school, I should say, probably sat about where Myers Gas Station is over here. It was to the east of the, where the current building is. Of course, the school building is the hockey services building that's right across the street, kind of kitty corner over here. Um, we'll get to that in a second, but um, they said this one was a little to the east of there in a hollow to help protect it during the winter. Um, so, judging by the lay of the land and such, probably over in that sort of hollow there somewhere. Um, that was there for a little bit. So the district, the school district then, Ashtamo School District, sorry, Herd School District, um, it wasn't technically part of Ashtamo yet, um, organized in May 1839, most likely named for an early settler, Charles H. Hurd. Um, he was a settler in section 14, which is this um, section across the road and, and uh, sort of to the northeast of here. Um, he, was, he settled there in 1835. He was the first township clerk. Uh, he was part of the town corresponding committee. Uh, he was a school inspector and he was a school assessor. So um, most likely that branch was named for him and he was a property owner there. Um, first teacher was with Miss Wellmouth. She served for six months, had 11 students. So 
Uh, if you can imagine going to school in a little old log cabin like that, it's insane. Um, yeah, and, and when you consider most of the kids walked to get there, and most of them would have walked two or three miles probably. So, you know, I mean, just imagine that type of thing. Um, so the, the herd school, um, you'll probably recognize this, but again, that's right across the street over here. It's the hockey services building, hockey and golf services building. Um, that's actually the fourth building, the fourth school building. Uh, the first one was that log hut built in 1839. That was soon after replaced with a small frame building um, sometime during probably the 1840s. Um, a brick structure went up uh, right where the, the building is today. Um, that went up in 1868, served until 1924 when they tore it down and built the building that you see today. So, um, Seems like I'm going off in the weeds about these buildings, but this will become clear in a couple minutes why we talk about these school buildings. So, um, so the old herd school, um, the, I thought this was an interesting one. Uh, James McLaughlin was a student there. He, he grew up and did other things, but he was a longtime resident. Um, he wrote this, 40 odd years ago, we assisted our grand old teacher, J.A. Beebe, in nailing the first American flag that ever floated over a public school in Michigan to the top of the cupola of Old Herd Schoolhouse. Now, whether that's true or not, we have to take his word for it. I don't know, but it's, I, that was a fun story. So. What year was it? Um, that would have been in the 1860s, probably late 1860s. Um, as far as I could tell, probably right after the brick building was built. So, so anyway, herd dis this became the herd school district. It was district number three in Ashtamo. Um, and herd was one of the fastest growing school enrollments in Kalamazoo County. So you think Ashtamo is growing fast today. This was then. So um, we're fast forwarding up to the 1950s now. But in 1953, there were 33 students and one teacher. Okay. Uh, two years later, there were 64 students. So it had doubled. Uh, a year after that, it increased to 85. And three years after that, there were 101 students and three teachers. So, um, and arguably they added a building after this. We'll get to that in a second. But you can see the rate that the the township was growing. It was, it was really growing. Um, also, interestingly, um, in the herd school, in the old school, it was part of Western's teacher, rural teacher program. Uh, Western was a teacher's college at that time. Um, and they taught, one of their programs was to teach teachers or future teachers um, how to, to teach and, and work in, in these rural schools. So you go to, go to school, go to college, learn how to teach, and then you'd go out and teach in, in a rural school. Um, well, they had rural schools set up as, as training schools, and the herd school was one of them. So um, they had a school house built on campus, but then they also used the herd school. Yeah. We're asking about district borders. Um, they were set up by district. So in other words, um, if you were north of a certain road, yeah. your kids went to whatever school. Uh, if you were south of that certain line or this certain fence row, then you went to another one. So yeah. Um, and yeah, there were several school districts in Ashtamo Township. So um, number 10 was the main one in the center of the village. Um, uh, this one was uh, um, uh, number three. So um, ultimately, Heard merged with Ashtamo in 1959. So, um, so now we have a new Heard school. The, by the 1950s, Ashtamo was really outgrowing that school, as you, you know, the numbers I just showed you. Um, so they built a larger two room building in 1954. Um, that sat right out in the opening in front of here, um, right 
kind of next to the police or next to the fire station there in that, that sort of opening um, that's right next to the road. Um, it was a two-room building built in 1954. Kindergarten through third grade still went to the old building across the street over there. Uh, fourth through eighth grade went to the new building. So, um, so um, enough about the buildings for now. We'll kind of that will come full circle, and that'll make sense when we um, get to it. Um, in 1964, there was a group that decided that, hey, you know what? We really need a community library. Ashtamo really needs its own library, so let's see how we can put that together. Uh, Margaret Minot was a community chair, um, and there was up to nine people in the, in the, uh, on the committee. Um, they worked for two and a half years um, and figuring things out, and... and um, uh, actually, and formed at that time the Friends of the Ashtamo Library and really started to try and figure out how they could put that together. Um, Margaret Minot is someone that I wasn't aware of, but who was really, in her time, a really a mover and shaker. She, was, she accomplished a lot. Um, she was born in 1925. She had a BA degree in education. Um, she and her husband operated three family businesses. They had DNM Wrecking, DNM Salvage, and Minot's Natural Foods in the 40s. Um, she raised six children plus a nephew. Um, in 1965, or by 1965, she'd become an, uh, a notary public. Uh, in 1966, she was elected to the Kalamazoo Board of Education as a trustee. Uh, she was the first African American member of the Kalamazoo. Um, school board. Um, she was also president of the Ashtamo PTA. Um, she was a corresponding secretary for the Hillside PTA. Um, she was a chair of the Ashtamo Friends of the Library Association. <gasps> and continuing on, 67 through 69, she was the, the school board secretary. Um, she served a four-year term on the school board. Um, in 67, she was named the Kalamazoo Board of Education Delegate to the Intermediate School District. Um, and in 1970, she became the, the Board of Education Vice President. Um, she went for re-election in 1970 and again in 1971 and was defeated both times. Um, can you guess why? Yeah, well, what? What do you think? Well, it's what you wrote, desegregate. Yep. She was, as part of the school board, she was a big proponent and a big driver behind the effort to desegregate the schools and desegregate Kalamazoo schools. And her, um, her big push was for um, accurate telling of history and for um, a more equi equitable um, access to information for, for all kids, for all students. Um, Kalamazoo voters apparently didn't go for that, so she was defeated twice, but she didn't give up. She served a year in the Kalamazoo County Commission. Uh, she was a delegate to the White House Conference on Small Business. Um, she was on the Ashtamo um, Township Zoning Board of Appeals. She was a city um, of Kalamazoo Recreation Division member. Uh, she served on the, the KVISD Board of, of Education. Um, and in 1991, she was awarded the NAACP Humanitarian Award. Um, and she died in 1999, but uh, when she received that award, she noted, or they noted, a particularly powerful say, uh, spokesperson for the equal education rights of minority children during a time when those rights are being questioned by the public schools. So really a mover and shaker within the community. And it was her, it was, it was Margaret, arguably, that was behind the push to open a library in Ashtamo. So um, she was the head of this committee, um, and they started their initial discussions in 1964, um, trying to figure out, okay, we want to do this. How do we finance it? Uh, where are we going to put it? Um, and interestingly, what kind of library would be most suited to the community? Uh, a lot of forethought went into this. So, um, uh, and as this, this group worked on things, 
um, the township let them use the basement of the old herd school over here to start storing things. So um, books and furniture and whatever they could start putting in there. Um, so they set this up, they, they formed Ashnamo Township Library Advisory Committee. Um, we see four people, Virginia Rhodes was the chair. Uh, Margaret resigned at that point in time, not because she didn't care about it, not because she had lost interest, uh, but that was when she ran for the school board. So um, she figured apparently that she could be more effective in, in that role. Um, so she joined the school board then and stepped down from this committee. But the seeds were there. It, it, they had decided it was gonna, um, it was gonna happen. So they opened what was called a library book station. Um, again, in, the, in what was called the Old Herd Schools, right across the street where Hockey Services is now. Um, it would be staffed by volunteers, so there weren't paid staff members to begin with. It was staffed by volunteers. Um, the Kalamazoo Public Library would provide furniture, books, training, support, not directly providing librarians yet, um, but it would provide support and training. The Ashtamo Township would provide the building, the rent, the heat, the lights, and et cetera. Um, and KPL would loan books in a circulating collection, so um, it would keep the library fresh. Um, and they also provided funds to purchase new materials. So that was really the seed of the Ashtamo Library. So it began in, on the 15th of November, 1966. I didn't plan that, guys. But that was, so today's the anniversary of it. Um, but it uh, began 15th of November, 1966. Uh, the branch was open for 16 hours a week. Um, they had 893 books to start with. Um, that soon grew, but interestingly, in the first six and a half months, uh, they circ 2,240 titles. So they were really, um, the, the community really responded quickly, um, and the library grew. So, and interesting, the split, 500 or 755 adult titles, and twice that many in children's titles. So there was a strong, um, strong pull for, for children's in this area. So why did the library cross the road? <laughs> why? why? Why did this happen? Well, uh, in 1965, Ashtamo Community Schools were annexed into the Kalamazoo Public School System. Okay, so that's a big step. In the, in the process of that, the following year, they closed um, the new Herd School, the one that was out in front here. They closed that building, um, and a year after that, they converted it uh, it formed the Tri-County Enrichment Center, which existed for a year, and then after that, it was it was part of the school system um, where they would uh, where uh, students with disciplinary issues, if you were misbehaving and, and whatever, it was it was uh, akin to a special education, or whatever. So they would send them out here. Um, in 1971, budget cutbacks, it, uh, a millage failed, and so they had to make major cutbacks in. The, KPS system, and, um, and so they closed the building completely. Well, you can guess what would have happened then. Um, so library director Mark Crum said, hmm, that building across the street looks pretty good. How about if we just move the library into that now unused building? No-brainer. The uh, Ashimo Township Board agreed unanimously. They made the move in 1972. Um, so that moved into, uh, again, the building out front here, they could spread out, and, um, and it really, th at that point in time, um, it really took off. That was also the year um, that the library celebrated its 100th anniversary. So that really took off. In 1973, then, um, the Ashtamo branch, which at that time it was still a cooperative, uh, between the township and the library. Uh, in 1973, it became fully part of the Kalamazoo Public Library system. Um, the, at that time, the schools governed the library. So as soon as the schools took over the Ashtamo schools, it just became a shoe in and, and the library um, then took over services completely and staffed it. That, um, some of the first paid staff were then. Um, Betsy Watts was the first branch lead librarian of the new 
library. Anybody remember Betsy? Yeah? Really? Um, so she was the first one. Um, and 72, 73 was when they widened West Main out here, widened M43. Um, so it was a huge construction project that made it really difficult to get into the building. Um, but I thought this was remarkable. That first year that they moved into the new building, the library saw a four-fold increase in circulation. Um, they were open 27 hours a week and had a staff of four. So they were really working. Um, by 1982, circulation had quadrupled again. By now it topped 58,000. And a decade and a half after that, or a little over a decade after that, by 1995, um, Ashtomo was the smallest building in the Kalamazoo Public Library system with the largest circulation. And at that time it was 114,000. Larger than downtown. Larger than downtown. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, Pretty remarkable, right, the, the growth. Um, interesting side story, there are uh, lots of interesting events happen, we have interesting programming. Um, but uh, one day in 1986, um, a woman went into labor in, um, in Goebbels, and so she and her mother piled in the pickup truck and headed for, um, headed for Kalamazoo for the, the uh, the hospital, um, on the way encountered a ridiculous thunderstorm, couldn't see, so ended up pulling into the library parking lot, and the little baby said, hmm, this is it, I'm, I'm coming out. Um, coincidentally, three um, nurses were in the library attending story time program with their children. Um, so somebody called out, said, hey, you know, you guys have to get out here. So they went out and assisted. Firemen from the fire station came over and draped a tarp over the top of it. And uh, little Ashley was born in June 19, June 19th, 1986, right here in the parking lot. So <laughs> that was such a cute story. And they went ahead and went on down to the hospital and everything was fine. So, And hopefully Ashley somewhere out there is, is uh, doing well. So by 1995, the Ashmo branch was bursting at the seams, right? Um, we're still in this little two-room building and, uh, and just going gangbusters. Um, that was the year they took a vote and voted to renovate the whole library system. So by a three to two majority, they approved a 1.19 mil um, tax increase in property taxes to fund this huge library renovation project. Um, so the Powell Branch Library received a, a refurbish. Um, new branch library buildings were built here for Ashtamo and for Eastwood. Um, Washington Square was restored, the building was restored, and Central was greatly expanded. They added a whole floor to it and, and completely rearranged. So all of that happened, and that's where the building that we're sitting in, that's when that started. Is that when the museum the, left correct. Yep, the museum moved out, and that really made way for uh, museum paint came, well, ultimately became part of KVCC. And, um, and by then, um, I didn't put it in here, but by then, the Kalamazoo Public Library was independent of the school district. It broke up with the public school system and, and went on its own. So your library taxes, you pay a separate library tax just specifically for the library. It's not part of the school system. So, um, so ground broke in, in October 1996. They started building this facility, a $2.95 million facility. Um, Interestingly, service continued at the old building out front while they were building back here. Um, they were only closed for maybe a week um, to move things back in, just a few days, uh, to move from the building out there into this building once it was started. Um, so then the empty building, and I just read this today, I thought that was interesting, but the, the Ashtamo, Fire, Ashtamo and Texas Township firefighters used the old building for practice exercise and burned it when it was time to tear it down and get rid of it. Um, they had a, a practice exercise out there. So um, The library is designed to appeal to children and the young at heart, of course. Um, so that's why it kind of looks like a magical castle and, and uh, that was intentional. Um, 
So they had big services. Today, uh, we serve a population of 23,700 in Ashtamo uh, with circulation that approaches 40,000 a month. So um, lots different than it was in the old days, but it just continues to grow. Um, we're a family place library, which makes um, a special designation for uh, family and children's services. Uh, we have trails out behind that's connected to the township park. Where they have story walk programs. Um, of course, high speed Wi-Fi and Chromebooks and iPads and science kits and, and all of that type of stuff is available just like, uh, just like any other KPL branch. So, um, That's the story of Ashtamo Branch Library. So, do you guys have any questions or comments or refutations? Say, no, you're not right. <laughs> <laughs> No? You told me about the, the bookmobiles were, were huge for, for me. Right. My family, my young family. It, it, was, it was, for a long time, it was up in B&W uh, grocery store, and it was other places too. Right. It, I don't know if it made Mine it. too, yeah. In the, I lived in the Oakwood at that time and, and raising kids. You know, and certain days, yep. they went to, and it was, it was really yep. useful. At one point in time, another thing I didn't put in here, but at one point in time, the, the main bookmobile stop for Ashtamo was at the, the school in the center, the big brick building that I showed you. Um, it stopped there, and in two hours, it outsurked the initial branch, what the branch was doing over here. In just two hours a week, it outsurked what they were doing over here. So the bookmobile was huge at one point in time. So. When did it stop? Um, it stopped um, in the 2000s, I want to say. what was the, do you know the reasoning? For that? Yeah, there, there were some strong budget cutbacks and considerations. Um, and um, basically, it had, the, the cuts had to come from somewhere. And by then, the library branches were far and above outsurking that. Um, and so that's why it was discontinued. Interestingly, though, now we have mobile services coming back around. So we have a mobile library, and it, um, the, the real push now is to serve underserved communities. So um, they have stops on the north side and, and stops on the east side and, and such to really take programs to them and, and all kinds of programs. So they provide Wi-Fi, you know, wireless internet, and they provide... Um, all kinds of other types of services other than just books. So um, anyway, yeah, those are, it, it's kind of come full circle as it were. So. You're right, yeah, yeah. Is, is this branch still the largest one, not central, I'm sure as much? Uh, Ashtamo branch is still the busiest branch other of, than other than central, correct, wow. yep. It's true, yeah, parking is easier, um, great selection, beautiful building, uh, what's not to love, so, yeah, yeah, so. Other questions, comments? Thank you so much for coming out on a snowy evening, and, and uh, um, I really, really appreciate it. It's nice to have you here, so, thank you. Thank you.